I'm Dave McHugh for D3Football.com and this is my D3 report from McCarthy Stadium in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania where it was a Mac battle between two teams with just one win each. Kings College, the hosts, against Stevenson Mustangs. Their lone win for both teams, Misericordia, in their first year program just a few miles from this site. In today's game, though, it was Kings who looked like the better squad, coming out and jumping out to a 20-0 lead halfway through the second quarter. Stevenson not looking very good on offense, a little bit unsettled, certainly not getting any momentum to go their way, but Kings was able to take advantage of lots of different offensive looks, I formations, uh, pistol formations, wide out, three, four wide outs at a time, shaking up Stevenson quite a bit and having su success going downfield. They were able to get out to that 20 nothing lead, unfortunately, due to one missed field goal and one missed extra point, or the deficit could have been even bigger for Stevenson, who didn't get on the board until 2.52 left to go in the half when Jeremy Miller caught a 40-yard pass from Gasparovic on a, ending a three-play 74-yard drive to make it 20 to nothing. In the second half, Kings would jump out and get up back up by 20, making it 27-7 thanks to Kyle McGrath, a 10-yard run touchdown. His second touchdown of the game, he started the scoring for Kings as well. Stevenson will respond back. Jeremy Miller on a reverse where the quarterback, Asperovic, was actually downfield with a lead block, 39 yards of the touchdown. Stevenson seemed to have momentum. But once again, Kings would come back and score midway through the fourth quarter, making it 34-14. Stevenson would have several times where they had chances to get back into it, but ill-timed penalties would negate huge plays for Stevenson, including a couple long runs for K.K. Smith, who once again did not run for 100 yards, and this time, unlike last week's four-touchdown performance, didn't have any scores either. Stevenson would get momentum, and Anthony Reed would come in to play quarterback and would march the team down for a touchdown and nearly one near the end of the game, but it was not enough as Kings improves to 2-6 and six overall and 2-5 and five in the conference with a 34-21 win over Stevenson. Stevenson falling to 1-7 and seven and 1-6 and in conference play. Let's get the stats really quickly. Stevenson did have most offense with 447 yards, though so most of that coming against the SAG defense late in the game. They had 226 on the ground, 221 in the air. For Kings, 390 99 yards of offense, 223 in the air, and 176 on the ground. For Stevenson, K.K. Smith, the leading runner, 14 carries for just 90 yards, again, no touchdowns. Anthony Reed would have six carries for 64 yards and a two-yard touchdown run himself. Jeremy Miller would have one run for 39 yards, that reverse we spoke of for a touchdown. Passing game, John Kasparovic, 11 for 27 for 126 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Anthony Reed would go seven for 16 for 95 yards and no scores. Receiving Jeremy Miller, the big guy, the big target, six catches for 92 yards and a touchdown. Anthony Smith would have three catches for 66 yards. Four Kings. Kyle McGrath, the big runner on the ground, 26 carries for 145 yards, two touchdowns. And Juden's uh, Goinbert had 13 carries for 34, correction, 25 yards. Passing Tyler Hartranth threw for 15 for 22 for 223 yards and three touchdowns for Kings. Kings will then will play one more game at home against Wilkes next week. Stevenson on the road against front-running Lycoming, a team that wants to stay in the running for a MAC title that game being played in Williamsport. Once again, Kings the winner over Stevenson, 34-21 here in Wilkes-Barre. I'm Dave McHugh. That is my D3 report, and I hope to see it on D3Football.com.